the gift of your grace, your love and your righteousness. Your love and your righteousness. Hey! 
journey of the narrow road And those who've gone before us line the way Cheering on the faith Encouraging the weary Their lives a stirring testament To God's sustaining grace Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses let us run the race not only for the prize but as those who've gone before us let us leave to those behind us the heritage of faithfulness passed on I think I first, when did I first hear that? I think I heard that um, in 87, uh, the friend who wrote it and I were on a mission trip uh, and we were stopping over in Quito, Ecuador. And he said, hey, I've been working on this song and uh, John Moore is his name. And I said, well, let me hear what it is. And so he started playing it. He only had the chorus, I think. And I said, hold that one for me because I think that's gonna be a good one. <laughs> and it has, it kind of, it has struck a chord and a lot of folks. Uh, I saw some of you grabbing hands like, okay, that's a, that's a prayer of ours as well, that we wanna, finish, we wanna finish the race. We want to pass the baton of faith on to the next generation. Um, well, I have to confess that early on, when I first started singing it, I thought that faithfulness was really pretty much up to me, right? That it was my effort, my zeal, my discipline, um, my tightening my belt one more notch and going, I'm really going to be faithful, you know. And, and the longer I've lived, I've realized that, sure, there's all those things involved, but the source of all of those things is the Lord himself. So that it isn't our faithfulness, right, 
but it's the faithful one who empowers us. And so really, there's never in the Christian life any room for boasting, right? We're not going to get to heaven and say, well, here I am, and boy, it was tough, but I really did it, Lord. No, the only thing we're going to say in heaven is worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive riches and wisdom and glory and honor and power and blessing. For from him, the Apostle Paul said in Romans 11, from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory. So find us faithful, yes, but oh, Lord, do that in me. <laughs> all for your own glory. That's our hope and prayer. Hey, have you enjoyed listening to Dick Tunney playing the piano over here? Me too. Man. Um, so, so for those who, you know, are watching this by television, they have no idea that we are terribly late tonight. This was supposed to start at 7 o'clock, and we didn't start till what, 8.30? And, and, and so thank you for staying here. Our flight was late. We had technical difficulties. And, uh, and none of the songs that we're going to do were any of our plan for tonight. So this is, we scratched it all, and we're just free-flowing. So that's good. That's good. And I'm a missionary kid. I grew up in South America. And so that was our entire life was free-flowing, right? There's whatever plan you think you have on the mission field, none of it works. And so you just say, okay, Lord, here we go, whatever. And so that's what we're doing tonight as well. Um, so Dick, Dick is, is, has a rich musical history, for those of you who, I know some of you know who he is. Uh, in fact, when I was just a child, I remember listening to him. Uh, on <laughs> <laughs> it isn't right, but it's just fun. Um, no, we're the same age, and Dick has been around a long time. Um, started off with the accordion in, um, when you were five years old, right? And then um, went straight from there uh, to Truth and the Imperials. No, no, there was high school and college and all that in between. But, but several groups, Truth, the Imperial, Sandy Patty's musical director for several years. Um, and then he and his wife, Mel, of course, uh, toured extensively and recorded and did all kinds of great stuff, wrote fantastic songs. So um, here we are after eight years still traipsing around the globe and make a noise in God's house, which is my delight. Well, speaking of the accordion, why don't you grab that thing? Yes, I know I can trust you in everything you do.
from the mighty to the small, the glory in them all is God's and God's alone. Oft 
so strong. God is the shall be satisfied and earth and him be one That's a good old hymn, isn't it? I mean, just, just when you start think things might be falling apart and God's up there wringing his hands like, uh oh, well, now what? He, it's not the case at all. He is sovereignly in control and rules, and this is his world. It's all his. I love that. All right. Um, let's do I Can See, shall we? That's, uh, this is from Luke chapter 24. And uh, we're making this up as we go. You're okay with that, right? Okay. Um, so Luke 24, the story of the two on the road to Emmaus. Remember that? So this is the day of the resurrection. And two of the disciples, we don't know what their names were, but two of them were walking on the road to Emmaus. I think it's like six mile journey or something from Jerusalem. And they are broken hearted. And who should appear walking next to them but Jesus, right? And so he asked them the question. And I, don't you love the fact that our God is the God who asks questions? Remember, the very first response he had after the fall was a question. Where are you? I mean, he could have just let him go, but no, he came looking. And Jesus showed up there next to them and said, what are you talking about? What's going on here? <laughs> and they said, are you the only one living in Jerusalem that hasn't heard? And so his second question was, what, what, what's happened? What's, what things? Well, it's all about him. He knows what's happening, but he's exposing their own hearts, right? That's what God's questions do. It's not for his information. He knows it all. <laughs> it's really to expose us. And so they poured out their woeful story of the one whom they'd hoped would be the Messiah, and he was crucified, and he's gone, and all their hopes are dashed, and oh, woe is us. And he says to them, oh, foolish men, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophet said. And then beginning with Moses, okay, that's the five, first five books of the Bible, and all the prophets, he explained to them everything that was written in the scriptures concerning himself. Wow. And uh, later, w when they would kind of talk to each other about that, that exchange, they said, didn't our hearts burn within us, right? Well, you know the rest of the story. They got to where they were going. He went in with them. Uh, and then he, he broke the bread, right? And then their eyes were open. They recognized him, and they, he, he vanished from their sight. And then he went all the way back to Jerusalem. And uh, they went back to Jerusalem and told their other disciples, it's true. He's alive. So here's the story. All at once he walked beside me like he'd been there all along. Not a stranger, but a father who can sense when something's wrong. And he answered all my questions, and he understood my fears that somehow vanished now that he was here. 
Can't you see who walks with you? Can't you hear who speaks your name? Can't you sense something stirring in your heart? How his words rang strong and true like a once familiar strain. Can the paths we follow from now on be the same? So I begged him, please to stay, spend the evening a few moments before he went his way. Then like a host, he stood and blessed me, broke the bread and poured the wine. Then I knew there was something there I recognized. Yes, I can see. I can send something stirring in my heart. How his words rang strong and true like a once familiar strain. And I know I'll never be the same. I can see. And from that And all the wonder of his glory shining through. And oh, the first time in my life I really looked into his eyes and saw eternity. And suddenly I knew. I can see who walks with me. I can hear who speaks my name. I can sense something stirring in my heart. How his words still ring strong and true like a once familiar strain. And I know I'll never be the same. It's really a miracle when our, when our eyes are opened. Um, opening eyes isn't just the fact that we decide that we want to someday open our eyes and recognize Jesus, right? I mean, if Ephesians is right, if Paul was right when he said, as for you, you were dead in your sins and in your trespasses. Um, if, if that's true, which it is, that means that that we don't have the wherewithal to just say, okay, I think I'm going to choose Jesus and just, I'm, I, think, I think today I'll pick him. There's some, it's way more than that. It's way more than that. I mean, do you know that he's always previous 
That's why all the praise goes to him. And that's why Paul said, so that no one can ever boast. We just can't. The gospel strips us all time and time and time again of all boasting so that really what faith is just the receiving faith. It, 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 it's a receiving gift. It, it's the hand that opens up and says, I receive what you offer to me, what you give to me. So, yeah, this, this whole miracle of having our eyes opened have you ever wondered why you see Jesus? I mean, why you have recognized him as your, your master, the one who has rescued you and redeemed you? Um, my wife's name is Mary Jean, and we've been married 36 years, and, uh, and she's, she's still, still my girlfriend. And um, we were driving on, to, on our way to church a while back, and, and it's a beautiful, beautiful day, and, and people are out, you know, they're, they're jogging, they're riding their bikes, they're doing all their stuff, they're just, you know, having fun outside family days. And the thought struck me, why us? I mean, it isn't that we're smarter than these folks, it isn't that we've made some better decision than them, right? It, 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 Lord, why are we the ones today that are being called by your spirit to come and gather with your people and get to hear your word opened up and have our very souls nourished with your word. Why us? Why us? And instead of looking at others like, what's wrong with you? It was like, oh God, thank you. <laughs> thank you for drawing us to yourself. Thank you for that. It's a gift, isn't it? It's a gift of God so that no one can boast. So how does it all start? It starts by, you may be watching this tonight and go hear the song about I Can See. In fact, when I first recorded this, I lived in an apartment. We lived in an apartment, Mary Jean and I. Paper thin walls, okay? And uh, so I was playing the song and my neighbor heard it through the wall, okay? And so he comes to me and he says, hey, what's, what's that song you're playing in there? So I gave him the thing. Well, next thing you know, I'm hearing it through my wall, but it, he's playing it and it's super loud. And, he's, and he says, I love that song. I just, what is it talking about? What, what's it about? So I told him the story and I'm talking about, you know, it's talking about the fact that, a lot, you know, people think a lot of things about Jesus. People think, okay, he's a good, he's a good example to follow. Okay, he's a good teacher, right? He was moral. He was all these things. The world has all kinds of opinions about who Jesus is. Said they'd much rather have him as an example than need him as a savior. And, and what, what you can't see in, with natural eyes is the depth of your sin and how desperately you have to have Christ Jesus to rescue you. And so that's what it's talking about, the process of having your eyes open. Well, it was like a year later, we talked and talked and talked and talked. About a year later, we were, we were moving, I bought something, we were moving a mattress or something. And, uh, and so he said, so, so how, what, how, I, I still don't get how you get to that next step. I said, Jeff, we've been around this for a year. <laughs> it's an act of faith, Jeff. God is working on you. I can, I can see it. I can tell he's doing this. And, and uh, what, what you really need to do is just say, Christ Jesus, I collapse before you and I receive you as, as my only redeemer, my only savior. And so... We stopped the car. He did that. And as soon as we were done, he clapped his hands and he said, that's it. I can see. <laughs> and that could be you. You know, God stirs in our hearts. He draws us to himself. You know, he wakes us up by his spirit. And then, and then you respond. Say, oh, Jesus, I trust you. I believe that you fulfilled everything that was necessary for my salvation. So I trust you. And it's a miracle. Yeah, our eyes are open and we see. Um, so let's see. We have three minutes and 15 seconds, I'm being told. Um, what could we do? What if we did a piece of Broken and Spilled Out? Shall we? Okay. One day, a plain village woman poured out a valuable essence 
disregarding the score. And once it was broken and spilled out, the fragrance filled all the room like a prisoner. A spirit set free from the tomb, broken and spilled out, just for love of you, Jesus, my most precious treasure. Father, hear your children call, humbly at your feet we fall, prodigals confessing all. To the cross we bring our blame, all our lifelong sin and shame, penitent we breathe your name. Penitent we breathe your name, by your love. By your grace, by the blood of Jesus, wash our sins away. Make us new today, and hear us as we pray. We're blind, but pray for eyes to see. Where we're bound, Lord, make us free. Stained, we plead for purity. sick, apply your cure, take our guilt and make us pure, for your mercy, Lord, is pure, for your mercy, Lord, is sure, by your love, by your grace, by the blood of Jesus, wash our sins away, make us new today, hear us as we pray. Have no other place to go. Only you can heal the wounding of our soul. So let forgiveness flow. Let forgiveness flow. Father, hear your children call. Humbly at your feet we fall. Prodigals confessing all. We bring our blame, all our lifelong sin and shame. Penitent, we breathe your name. Penitent, we breathe your name. Penitent, we breathe your name. Father, hear your children.
His love will sail forever, bright and shining, strong and free. 
like an ark of peace and safety on the sea of human need through the hours of all the ages those tired of sailing on their own finally rest inside the shadow cast by Calvary's love across their souls. Calvary's love, Calvary's love, priceless gift, Christ makes us worthy of the deepest sin. Calvary's love has never faltered all its wonders still remain souls still take eternal passage sins atoned and heaven gained sins forgiven could be uh, the anthem of the church. I've heard it sung in Spanish. I know in Korean, uh, maybe some other languages of places that we've been. Um, it's, it's the song of the church because we recognize that if we belong to the Lord, it's simply by his kindness and his grace. Um,
there's a there's a, a frightening passage in Philippians chapter two. It talks really about the humiliation of Jesus, um, and then it talks about his exaltation. It's all about the fact that we needed someone to to save us like ourselves, and so he miraculously God was born of the Virgin Mary and took on a body like ours, a, a, a real live person, a baby, he lived in time and space and history, but he lived perfectly. He humbled himself, living a perfect sinless life, but then took all of our penalty on himself so that he who knew no sin became sin for us so that in him we could be made acceptable to God. That's what it means. So Christ was humbled, but he's exalted. God has given him a name that is above every other name. So that at the name of Jesus, someday, every knee will bow. I imagine that for, for many, it'll be a horrible moment. It'll be the crushing realization that the one they have mocked and scorned and rejected and ignored is really the rightful ruler of the universe. Now, that won't keep them from bowing. Every knee will bow. It will. And now we live in a time of grace when you hear my voice and God offers to you the opportunity to to collapse before him now, <laughs> to bow before him now, and to confess him as Lord. You could simply just say something simple like this. Lord Jesus, I trust you. I receive you as my Savior. And I call you my Lord. In Jesus' name.